Yesterday there was a, an article in the, uh, in the Chronicle Herald in uh, Nova Scotia uh, by, a, he called, they called him a post-secondary expert, Dr. Ken Steele, and he talked about the changing demographics and the challenges they pose. And I, I suppose for me those are grits so large. Um, I was a, a three-year-old immigrant when I came to Canada, and I remember there was no EAL programming at that time. You sank or swam or, uh, or you uh, did a lot of uh, truancy uh, because it was a hard place to be when you were going to kindergarten. And it's possibly that the hokey pokey is really what it's all about because that's the first thing I learned about Canada that you do the hokey pokey. And uh, I don't know where that's got me in these days. But the issue around demographics. Um, so much of schooling, I think back to a lot of the educational research, is so built on uh, norms, both statistical and moral norms. And so they've pretty well gone out the window in a lot of ways with that. We can't count on those social, even and moral norms the way we know them because of the demographic changes. Not only the intercultural changes, as we move from being a much more geriatric population, but also the rich change in cultures that we find in Canada. And so what, we've, what, we've, uh, what we're facing with that is just an incredible uh, challenge to a very medieval institution that really saw its last reform at the uh, turn of the previous century as it changed to from basically from uh, to a research university. And we've really never we've really never changed since then. Well, we've brought it over here, but we've never really changed uh, the way we think about the university at this point in time. Uh, we've just managed to think about it in more evaporated ways, but the frame has held fast. And it's possible at this point in time that you can't put new wine in old uh, wine skins. Just as a hat off to the uh, uh, Indian College there. Um, so for me, what we need to understand is that in a day of changing dem demographics, we also need to understand that because we don't all have the same assumptions, we need to work much harder at developing common assumptions and cohesion in the nation state. And that has brought to us the need for not only massification, but universalization of post-secondary education. It is no accident that I'm here today because in another life, I would have been fishing. Much more fun. <laughs> and so uh, we've gone from the progression from a university being an elitist institution to a university being an institution that actually shapes um, our society on the ground. So I teach in a teacher education program, and I say to my students every day in every way, in your classroom you are creating and recreating a Canadian ethos. And that means inclusion for everybody in that classroom, and you better know how to do it. There's no way some middle class uh, person is going to be able to just reproduce themselves in the classroom anymore. And it creates real difficulties for some people because they have to become very self-conscious about what they do and how they do it. And it's difficult for 20-year-olds to become conscious about what they're doing. <coughs> This, of course, has given rise to all these kinds of programs that we have to bring people into that knowledge economy. So we have the access program, which has been going on for a very long time, but we also have all manner of transitions programming in adult education, whereas people went through normatively, sort of on time and lockstep. Increasingly, as we have uh, experienced these changes, we have gone out of step with each other out of step with the institutions that we experience. And we have all these bridging approaches that are trying to normalize, quote unquote, uh, what is just doesn't even exist anymore. 
And so as we try to normalize it, it creates other problems for us, which are expensive, which are under-examined, um, and not understood systematically. Then we have at the federal level, because our, our uh, education is uh, provincial, at the federal level we have the issues of globalization creating incredible and dynamic problems internationally. When we are uh, harmonizing um, trade across provinces, we are also harmonizing the fact that teachers can go across provinces, and so that we have to harmonize our programming across provinces so that we don't lose out. We have two-year programs, we have one-year programs in Ontario, and the teachers from Ontario can come and teach here. So when we have these free trades uh, uh, deals happening, as professionals, we are part of those free trades, and that's part of the globalization. And so what's happening as we develop these free trade situations with Brazil, with China, we're part of the package as human resources in that package as professionals in that package. And so how can we develop the capacity in society to deal with the issues that arise from that globalization if we don't even know we're part of that package? We might learn about it in a second year sociology course. You know, we're not going to even know about it until well down the road. And so we don't even have a way to understand ourselves in that. I was at a, a three-day conference between Brazil and Canada with that was based on de developing dialogue and developing educational strategies between countries because we are in a free we are in a free trade agreement. And for me, it's really traumatic. They're still shooting their Aboriginal people in northern uh, in northern Brazil. Um, it's incredibly traumatic. My kids are Aboriginal, and so for me to think about how they can't get their heads around it, well, we won't go there right now. But it's a live issue if we're going to be uh, trading with people. Also the fact that while this is happening, we have to develop policy because we have no culture. And policy is in fact a way of normalizing our interactions when there is no culture or when everything is in transition. And so that becomes really important that the stakeholders that are involved are participating and not just those people that are in bureaucracy talking about the larger good for the larger group, but a way of providing integration. And so uh, post-secondary initiatives to build capacities within the provinces become incredibly important. I love the University College of the North, and that was a very bold move that was made up there. And they need support, and they need help, and they need support at all levels. It's a, it was a very bold move, and there were some things that still need to work out, but we need some bold moves that gives more um, that gives more capacity to rural areas in Manitoba. The concentration of everything in Winnipeg in, in an urban area is is really, in a lot of ways, uh, very uh, regressive. The fact that education increasingly has become formalized and credentialized, and so we had people, you know, that could uh, put together a building on the farm somewhere. And now they, they have to meet code requirements. I just completed teaching um, a Red River cohort. And the Red River cohort was uh, outraged that one, they, they had to get credentialed at a certain level to teach. But the fact that they had to be academized in some way to get that next credential so that they could actually teach what they knew, what they knew, knew, knew in their body that they had been working on for years that they had to provide a demonstration that they could teach that. Um, so the formalization of education is, is really a difficult area, and especially within the provincial and federal relations. Uh, increasingly, we, I'm sure all of you have done uh, deals with a handshake. Now we need an MOU because, Lord help us, those lawyers that work with us, they want to see it in writing because they want to cover their bases. And so especially when we work with school boards, with institutions that have responsibilities, we need to know that those things have to be formalized, they have to be written, they have to be textualized, they have to be vetted at all levels. And so it becomes really important to be able to articulate. Um, even the applied degrees in Manitoba now, increasingly, um, 
my lovely student that was a terrific cook, but you know, writing isn't everybody's forte. And so we need to be able to balance some of those things and look at some of those things to make sure we're providing some um, equities in that whole process. And of course, my fifth one is the issue of indigenization of the academy and uh, Manitoba society, preferably all of Canada. It's time for a uh, wakey wakey uh, for Canadian citizens, and especially here in British Columbia, Jamie Wilson has been doing a really good job of that in terms of promoting the, uh, the treaty, uh, the treaties of Manitoba, <coughs> and the treaties of, as a way of framing. Because if we're going to talk about sustainability, sustainability is a long time. Uh, even the traditional languages, they talked about how to have a relationship with the land. It's not something that English does really well, even if, if, if it's couched in ecological terms. And so what we're doing now then is trying to regain some of those things, like through uh, the National Research Center for the TRC, trying to bring home some of the understandings around not just Indigenous knowledge, Indigenous ways of being, but also indigenous people because very often, um, you know, it's fine. I'll tell a little story about uh, when I was up at UCN last. Uh, we had, I, there was a, a presentation by a young lad who was in the education program, which is called Kinano, which is, means all of us. And the University College of North has got a, a special act that has a special governance. And one of the most important aspects of it is that they have an education program that is uh, fairly land-based, that is very northern and aboriginal. And one of the young lads that was presenting it was at a MERN conference that we had up there, said, you know, um, I always thought that uh, UCN was like just for aboriginal people. And then he couldn't make it down to Manitoba for a year or so, and then his mom says, oh, I'll take a couple of courses. It's there, take a couple of courses. So he took a couple of courses, and then he took some more, and he's found a marvelous home in the Keenanau Education Program because it speaks to him as a Northerner. It speaks to his experience as a Northerner. And it's, 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 it was really wonderful to see that because it's been such a struggle over the last 10 years since I moved here that he was really spoken to in that program. And this was a non-Aboriginal fellow that had been up there for a couple of, his family had been up there for a couple of generations. And he was talking cohesion as he worked with those children. And so for me, those are those five points. Uh, I tend to get a little dense after a while, so we'll pass it along to Andrea. Thank you.